Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to save data to your Arduino's EEPROM permanently. The EEPROM allows you to preserve data even after a reboot, re-upload of code, or power loss. It's like writing to a mini SD card. I'm going to demonstrate how we can use the EEPROM with a two button and two LED circuit. The Arduino will preserve which LED was last pressed after power cycles. You don't absolutely need these components to follow along, but this circuit helps put the EEPROM's use into context. What you're going to need to be able to complete this tutorial is an Arduino Uno, a breadboard, a couple of push buttons, a couple of LEDs, three resistors, one of them being a 220 ohm resistor, the rest being high impedance resistors, a cable to bring the Arduino to your computer, and some breadboard compatible wires. The circuit we're going to build is shown here. Connect one LED to digital 10, the other LED connects to digital 11. I've tied the short legs of these LEDs to a common 220 ohm resistor and then to ground. The buttons are connected to digital 7 and 8. You will need to use a high impedance resistor on both the digital 7 and 8 line to pull it to ground when the button isn't pressed. When the button is pressed, the signal line of the button will increase to 5 volts, allowing the Arduino to read a high. When you release the button, the pull down resistor drops the signal line back down to 0 volts, giving you a reading of low. On the right is a breadboard physical layout of how I wired this all together. However you lay it out, just make sure you follow the same logical circuit. Let's go ahead and wire this all up. The next thing you're going to want to do is open up a copy of your Arduino IDE. Let's give this a save. I'm going to call this one Tutorial 10. Now we have a few devices connected to our Arduino and we need to let the Arduino know where they are. So we have LED 1 and that is connected to digital 10. We have LED 2 and that is connected to digital 11. We have button 1, which is connected to digital 7, and we have button 2, which is connected to digital 8. In the setup, we need to specify the pin modes for each of these um, pins, so we know LED 1 is going to be an output, LED 2 is going to be an output, LED, uh, sorry, button 1 is going to be an input, and button 2 is also going to be an input. Go down to your main loop and what we're going to do here oh uh, we, okay so we also need an indicator uh, a, a status holder for uh, determining for keeping track of which button was last pressed so I'm going to call that uh, last press I'm going to initially set it being equal to zero. So down in our main loop, we're going to want to create an if statement and we're going to say if digital read of button one, what this means is it's going to evaluate button one, see if it's uh, positive or negative. If it's positive, then the if, tra uh, if statement is true. So if button one is being pressed, then we're going to say our last press is equal to button one. Else if digital read button two, then that means our last press is going to be equal to button 2. Knowing that, we can now evaluate last press. So if we find that last press is equal to button 2, or button 1, let's start off with button 1. If it's equal to button 1, then we're going to want to digital write LED 2 to be low. This turns it off. And we're going to want to digital write LED 1 to be high, uh, which turns on LED 1. Otherwise, if last press is equal to button 2, then we're going to digital write LED 1 to be low, and we're going to digital write LED 2 to be high, turning it on. Give this a save, and upload it to your Arduino. So now we've uploaded the code. I'm just going to spin this board around here so it's easier for you to see. If I click button 1, we get the white LED on. If I click button 2, we get the green LED on. And if we keep switching back and forth, we get the different LEDs on. So here I have LED, the green LED being on. If I click the reset button on the Arduino here, so reset button is located right there. If I click that, we turn off the LEDs, the Arduino resets and none of the LEDs are on. I have to click the button again to be able to get it on. 
So what we're going to try to accomplish in this tutorial is save that button press state such that if the Arduino were to reset or lose power and then come back online, we preserve the fact that uh, that LED should be on when we power it in again. So let's learn a little bit more about this EEPROM. First, we're going to have to import the library uh, in our code here. So go to Sketch, Include Library, and choose EEPROM. I'm going to write a couple of notes here. First off, EEPROM is not really meant for 100 million read-write cycles. In fact, we're, we're good for about 100,000 write slash erase cycles. So don't go crazy when you're saving data to your Arduino with this. Otherwise, you have the potential issue of wearing it out, so to speak. As well, you should know that it takes about 3.3 milliseconds per write. So if you're doing something that's really time sensitive, this is actually quite a bit of time to write data to the EEPROM. But for our simple button press here, uh, we're not going to be concerned about that. The way EEPROM works is you can store data directly on the ATmega328P if you're using an Arduino Uno. Different Arduino boards have different microcontroller units on it, so the EEPROM changes depending on what board you're on. If you're using an Uno, you got about a kilobyte, 1024 bytes, that you can write to your EEPROM, whereas if you're using an Arduino Mega, you can get 4 kilobytes, or 4096 bytes. Each one of these bytes has an address, and we need to know what the address is of the EEPROM that we want to talk to. So, so since we're using an UNO, I could choose any address between 1 and 1024. So I'm going to choose an arbitrary address here. I'm going to call it EEPROM address, and I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call on 130, just to show you that I'm going to write to that address of the EEPROM. So now what I'm going to do is in our loop statement here, when we read that button one has been pressed, we're going to write it to last press, but we're also going to update our EEPROM. And we're going to do that by typing EEPROM.write. We have to give it our EEPROM address, which we know is 130. And then what do we want to write to it? We can write one byte, and that one byte I'm going to write is last press. Similarly, I'm going to copy this over to here, where if button 2 is pressed, we write last press to the EEPROM address. The only other thing we need to change here is say that last press is equal to, and we're going to check the EEPROM, we're going to read the EEPROM, and we're going to read from the EEPROM address that we want to read from. So, we, so the way that this code works is we set up our pins, we then read the address, and we're going to read something. If we haven't initialized or filled anything out in there, then you know we're going to get back like a value of zero. When we press button one, we write to the address for the first time. If we press button two, we overwrite the address with our new value. That way, when we lose power and we reboot the Arduino, it's still archived in the EEPROM here for the last press, which would allow this area of code to be uh, executed. So give this a save and upload it to your Arduino. All right, so now when I click a button, the LED comes on. Note that it wasn't on before. I had to click the button to actually get this LED to come on. And now when I disconnect the Arduino and reconnect the Arduino, that LED comes back on. And that's because we read the EEPROM address and uh, we wrote to it when I actually click that button. Similarly, if I click the other button, such that the green LED comes on, and I hit the reset button here on the Arduino, it goes out, and then it comes back on when it reads the address. So every time I'm pressing the button right now, I am writing to the EEPROM over and over again. So remember, I can only do this 100,000 times, and then the EEPROM is effectively spent. So a better way to go about doing this is you could read the EEPROM first before writing to it if you want to preserve your EEPROM, but for the sake of speed in this tutorial, I just show you how to overwrite it every time. So there you have it, how to save data to the EEPROM of your Arduino Uno. For more tutorials like this, visit thezanshow.com.